let's have some doodling fun and this week I thought I would get out my watercolour pens so this is going to be a watercolour doodle have you watercolour doodled? well you're about to see how I do it and I hope it inspires you to give it a go because it's a really great way of getting more comfortable with your watercolours so go ahead and grab whatever watercolours you have to hand and it could be crayons again like last week or watercolour paints or watercolour pencils whatever you might have you can pretty much do this type of watercolour doodling with anything that will respond to water even after it's dry so that's the main thing here so this is not a one for water down acrylics leave your acrylics acrylics <laughs> leave your acrylics behind this week it's all about watercolour and I love playing with my watercolour to get different textures but if you've ever sort of felt lost or maybe intimidated by watercolours then this doing this kind of doodling exercise is just the perfect way to play find out more about how they work for you and how to manipulate them to get different looks and it's a totally no pressure no expectations sort of way just to play and then you can carry that knowledge that you learn from doing this kind of doodle exercise into the other watercolour practice and watercolour projects that you do and you know me I'm all for that just playing and experimenting and see where you can go with it so I'm working in my watercolour sketchbook and I'm just going to fill a page with some bright watercolour pattern and I do actually have a couple of aims for my project today the first being to fill a page but the second one is to add as much texture as I possibly can just using the colour and water and nothing else well you know a brush the pen itself but you know what I mean <laughs> and I'll show you how I do this as I go along because that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to manipulate both the colour and the water as I go so keep your eye out for the different things that I'm doing and the different ways that I'm playing with the texture now you might have to vary up how you use the different techniques depending on what materials you're using and also what paper you're using them on so it's very much a trial and error kind of work here but that's exactly why this kind of watercolour doodling is so useful and so much fun and you know just let some interesting things happen when I start doing things like this particularly if I haven't done it for a while is I start trying to figure out exactly how much water I need to add to the paper to get things moving and I haven't worked in a sketchbook since January this year even though it is meant to be one of my regular exercises working in my watercolor book my watercolor sketchbook but I don't know <laughs> just haven't managed to get that habit fully entrenched yet I'm working on it I'm working on it anyway I just need to remind myself about how the water and color flows on this paper so I can do this by adding some water to the page and let it touch some of the colored line that I've put down there and where the ink is still wet hopefully you're gonna get some color running into the water but I can also add more water to the color line itself as well if I need to either over the whole line or just in places and see what kind of effects I get from that and hopefully I'll get some nice cauliflower blooms coming out of it
For my piece I want the white paper to play a role too, so there's going to be areas where I just make sure that I don't touch the paper and keep it clean, so there's going to be gaps between lines. And I quite like that look and how that sort of works out, so I'm going out of my way to do that. In watercolour you get lovely crisp lines when you add colour to a dry surface. When you add colour to a wet surface or pull out the colour with water, then you get a much more feathered look to it, a more diffused look to the line. And both look wonderful and they're just gorgeous sort of ways of playing with your colour and getting different line qualities or different edge qualities in colour blocks. And it can be really handy for all sorts of different effects when you're working with your watercolours. So in this piece I want a contrast of sharp edges, feathered edges, bright colours, more diffused colours, and white of the paper, then also speckling and cauliflower blooms as well. And these are the types of textures that I'm trying to work into my watercolours as I go. But they're also the type of textures that are perfect, watercolours are just so good at those kind of textures. I picked the colours for this one before I started. Well, it actually started as a small random doodle where I picked the colours as I went along and without really thinking too much about what colours I was picking. And I liked how that small doodle turned out, so I decided that I would do it again as a full page of my watercolour sketchbook. But I didn't change up the colours for the bigger version, so the colours were already picked out for this version but were an organic choice when I did it the first time. And I love the strong colours of the vibrant inks and they really work well for the textures and the techniques that I'm using here because you get a really good contrast in that strong colour. And I went out of my way to make sure that colours that wouldn't mix so well together, like say for instance the yellow and the purple, make sure that they're away from each other and only, only next to colours that will mix quite well with each other. But sometimes you do actually get some really interesting effects by taking a risk of letting colours that shouldn't mix well together, but sometimes you can get some really interesting effects when you let them mix and see what happens. So don't be afraid to try it from time to time. Particularly on a doodle piece, that's all about experimenting and playing and seeing what happens, and it's a great way to learn which colours do and don't play well together for you.
There are wet and dry areas on this piece now and with a little bit of splashing of some clean water I'm going to add some more texture. But this is the type of texture that needs time to develop because the water needs time to dissolve some of that colour and then once the colour dissolves in those splashes of water it will move around a little bit and what happens is that that will then develop its own unique and beautiful texture and you can't really rush it. You kind of just have to let it do its own thing. So do give it some time, leave it to one side, out of the way, and see what comes out of it, see what develops. And it works really strongly on those strong colours. But if you're using it in lighter areas, where you've used lighter colours, then you might get a more subtle texture. So play around with all the different types of watercolours that you have if you've got them. See what different effects you can get with the colour and the water and, and just those two things, just water and colour, using it in different ways, splashing it, mixing it, letting it feather, putting it onto dry paper, getting crisp lines and basically just have a lot of fun playing around with your watercolour doodles and learning lots about them. So I can't wait to see what your watercolour doodles look like so do share them with me on Instagram and you can tag me in so I can see, it just makes it easier for me to find them. Keep looking after yourself, staying at home if you're able to, stay creative if you're able to and I'll catch you again for some more art soon. Bye.